Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Fabul Gauntlet. We are in the play-in round. Both of our runners tonight are at the three and two mark after the Swiss, and they've got one more obstacle, and that is each other, uh, to make it into the vaunted brackets. We've got Cassidy Moen going against Beernerd1. Really excited to take a look at this race. My name is Rex Raoul, and I'm here with PK4787. PK, uh, how are you feeling about this uh, this week coming up? Well, I don't have my race until Saturday, so I'm going to at least enjoy watching everybody else who has to uh, try to make it into the bracket stage. These are the, the same flags as the Swiss tournament flags, so we should be pretty familiar with them right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited for some more, you know, some more free enterprise. Yeah, this is going to be taking everything that they've learned after, over the past five weeks of these flags uh, and uh, do, using it to the best. These should be really good races this week, I'm thinking, because these are people who need the win in order to stay alive. And with five weeks of these flag sets under their belts, uh, I think we're going to get, see some really exciting races. Uh, today, it looks like we're starting with a Yang start, everybody's favorite character. I know he's my favorite character. Um, so uh, what, do you, what would you think seeing Yang at the start? Um, first thought in my mind is, uh, where is there a Thunderclaw? And, uh, where is somebody that I can hit with a Thunderclaw? Uh, for anyone who's been watching, it is a very inexpensive item, and you can find it in a lot of places, and it has maybe the most utility for Yang as far as that bonus damage, uh, weaknesses against bosses, um, certain trap chest searchers, things of that nature. So I personally love a Yang start even though he's he's not a great character early game, that's for sure. Yeah, he definitely needs some love in order to get good. That Thunderclaw is a huge thing uh, that we might see people poking into weapon shops trying to find. Um, is there a character that, like, that you are hoping to see early, uh, maybe to pair along with Yang? Um, you know, considering Yang's slow growth, somebody like a Sid... Uh, who has a lot of utility early, you, you know, maybe Rosa, somebody that you can equip something on that can get some early damage done. Uh, but depending on what they find, what they locate, uh, it doesn't take too long to get somebody like Yang, at least to the point where they're dealing decent damage. All right, and it looks like our runners are off now. Uh, we're Remember, we're, we are on a, about a 15-minute delay. Uh, for the runners, but it looks like Kane is going to be the second character. We see Dark Knight Cecil in the Bygan spot and the Legend Sword as the starting item. We're going to get those uh, objectives up real shortly as well. Yep, so the Kane, the Yang start, uh, not the most power early, but uh, there are definitely a couple weapons I'd be looking for here, Rex, uh, that, would, that would at least get Kane pretty quickly online. Yeah, Kane has a, a huge uh, weapon pool to draw from, so a lot of different ways to make him useful early. Um, but let's take a look at these uh, objectives. That's going to really uh, kind of color what we're going to be doing this seed. Looks like we have a couple boss hunts in there. We're going to have a required mount or deals. Um, pink tail and... Uh, let's see here. Looks like Beerner is going to get to that fifth one because I missed it right away the first time. Yep, yeah, it was Sand Ruby. Ah, uh, Sand Ruby. Okay. No character hunts in this one. Uh, do you think uh, boss hunts or uh, character hunts are more difficult? I would say, you know, just statistically, boss hunts might be a little more frustrating. But then again, uh, the character behind the giant is, is about the same as having a boss at the CPU spot. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't love those. Don't love the boss hunts, but it's early. <laughs> See a little bit of divergence immediately as Cassidy heads straight to Troria and loots the small treasury there as the beginning uh, looting route, whereas uh, Beernerd is going for a little bit more of a traditional Baron loot. Yep, so... I mean, both have a fair number of chests. There are, There is the bonus of being right there for this double item shop check in Troya. Um, but I didn't see too much of incredible value. The Dragoon armor is nice uh, as far as early defense. But what you're really hoping for is some, some, maybe some J items that are going to 
you know, make these first first bosses a little trivial. Yeah, it looks like uh, Beardard might have had a little bit more luck in Baron. I think we saw a Stardust item and a Blizzard Spear. Uh, so that's going to really help out uh, with... The, bl the Blizzard Spear is one of those items that's going to really help Kane do his damage early. We see a Cat Claw up in... Uh, in Eblin, or not Eblin, a uh, Damsian Castle as well. So that Cat Claw plus five strength, that's that's a really nice item to find. If you didn't have Gang, it's also a great item to sell. Um, but that is that is going to contribute. Maybe not quite fully there as far as the Yang damage you're hoping for, but definitely a good start. Now it looks like Cassie is going to the basement of Damsian instead of going up to unlock the Hovercraft. Now the uh, Cat Claw was up in the uh, top part of Damsian. We'll see if Cassidy decides to uh, um, launch the hovercraft. Since we don't have a, uh, a an objective that requires the hook, there, there might be an argument to not doing that, possibly saving the time of going through that whole process. But he'll miss out on the Cat Claw if he does. But it looks like he's going back into Damsian, so... Well, uh, there is the trade away the pink tail, which oh, I um, missed that. <laughs> there, there, it's an interesting when you think about the the trade away the tail things because it actually requires two key items as opposed to you know basically anything else, which only requires one. Yeah, I forgot about that pink tail one. Yeah, definitely going to need that. So, no need, no reason to not launch the hovercraft while you're already in the neighborhood of Dancing, anyways. And we have uh, taking a. Taking a shower in, uh, in obviously this is a Dath seed. Uh, I believe that was the Octomom. Oh, it might have been the Antlion. They have very oh, it similar. Did. The second look, it looked similar to Antlion, actually. I could be wrong there. Maybe Antlion just dug its way too far yeah. <laughs> over <laughs> from, the, from the nest. They have some very similar spur, uh, overworld sprites, so. <laughs> easy to get those it, it's sort of like the um the um palm and porum sometimes it's easy to just mix them up sometimes uh, another blizzard spear in the antlion cave that's a real nice find so uh even if cassie misses that one in baron uh, we'll still have a nice blizzard spear uh to use for the early part of the game and it looks like tella is the character up on the top of mount ordeals or excuse me mount hobbs with a lunar sparkle boss Yep, Tella with required ordeals, not the worst person to see here. That Blizzard Spear will be nice against this plague, um, as it does do bonus damage to the flying enemies. And this 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 is one of those fights where you don't really have a good option for eliminating one of your teammates. Yeah, it looks like that's not the sort of thing that uh, Cassidy wants to deal with now uh, is going to go ahead and try some other things. But you see that um, Mount Hobbs Tella, and you know that there's require ordeals. Are you all already thinking of a possible D-Machine grind? It's it's certainly certainly crossed my mind here. Uh, it's really going to depend on how long it takes to locate that Darkness Crystal, but that is, that is number one on my priorities list, knowing that I'll have a Tella who is fully online Probably before you know any underground shows up, depending on what this king queen has. Yeah, we're seeing a free boss down at the bottom of Antlion Cave, like King Queen Eblin, is uh, not really what you want to see. You want to see those free bosses at the more difficult spots, uh, and the more difficult spots in these low stat spots like this. But you take what you can. This is a randomizer, after all. And a white sword or a white. <clears throat> Sure, excuse me, as a reward, a, a nice item. Not something that either one of these characters is interested in putting on, but for for later or endgame or wherever we find a, a decent white thing, that's something to value. That's something that can even be useful on Tella as well. Well, that is right. Um... It is an interesting spot for the plague, unless oh, there was a there's a kamikaze in Cassidy's inventory. I'm not Maybe, sure where that might have been found, found that, in Antlion. 
a definite possibility because I, that's something that you're definitely you're gonna want to throw out is very quickly early into that plague fight. Uh, Beerneard about to get the news that plague is up at the top here. <laughs> So once once you have this Tella, did did we see who was in the uh, who was in the inn? Uh, we uh, the runner sure did. <laughs> I, I I might have been glancing back and forth when Beerner popped in there. Uh, maybe somebody in the chat uh, looks like uh, Matthias thirteen forty nine says Rosa was at the Baron Inn. Oh okay. So that's I as far as looking for you know a D machine and a and a slingshot, you're gonna have. Pretty decent characters, depending on when that Darkness Crystal shows up. Well, and the other thing is, uh, like, if if that Darkness cro shows up, because we are not going to require, like, none of our um, objectives specifically require the moon, unless, of course, I'm missing something again, obvious, like the pink tail or something. <laughs> uh, but, no, they don't. Uh, we don't know whether or not these boss hunts or the required key items are going to be found on the moon. They could be. Uh, but there's definitely a possibility that this could be one of those "quote unquote" haunted moon seeds, where you don't need to. Nothing up there is required at all. So in that case, not finding the darkness crystal might be the uh, the faster way to do this. But th then again, if you find it early, you've got that D machine open for you. Yeah, this this flag set definitely rewards if you have an early enough D machine. But if you do something like the hook route, you get underground, you have sirens, um, there's definitely a play to be made for, or a case to be made for, you know, getting up to those 10 key items and then, you know, taking either eggs or the gold dragons or, you know, any other form of XP that you're looking for. Cassidy finding spider silks available in uh, in the Kabul item shop, along with, if we see Iridia, a sylph summon, which has been... Uh, something that's been used by a lot of runners in this uh, event. And a little bit of a divergence as Beernerd is going for the early ordeals play with that Tella in the party and the required Mount Ordeals play. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's it's going to be a question of uh, what bosses we run against. We don't have my favorite boss, which is Back Attack Plague. But we might still get to see some of the maybe a back attack karate is a, is a very entertaining thing to see as well. Yeah, that back attack plague is a very rude boss indeed. And I'm wondering, you know, we'll see if the damage level is high enough where you don't have too much of a concern. Uh, the blizzard spear, I've seen ice brand as well. Um, but you're, yep, you're hoping to find somebody that you can use elemental weaknesses against. And this is one of them. We got Kane Azo, who, when it, when the water is not is not up, uh, he's weak to ice. When the water is up, he's weak to thunder. So That's... if we can get the lit one off before Kane lands, if he's equipped with that Blizzard Spear, it should do huge damage. Oh, and that is great timing there. A, another situation where a thunder claw could potentially come in handy, or I was going to mention, you know, at, if you have an ice claw, a fire claw, and a thunder claw, it's a bit of a more comfortable climb up here, assuming you, you know, you run into somebody whose weaknesses you can take advantage of. Advantage of. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I, I think, well, and I think just in general, if you find all three of the elemental claws, that just makes Yang just so much more powerful throughout the entirety of the seed. Oh, definitely. And already having a Cat Claw, um, if you compare the two of those together, you, you get very good damage, particularly as as he grows in, in experience and actually gains more of that strength. Meanwhile, Cassidy uh, has found the Magma Key by defeating yet another free boss. This time it was the um, Water Hag in the Fabul Gauntlet Vanilla spot. So... Uh, we have our underground access already. So that's that's going to open up shop checks, um, the character check, the Sheila 1 check, um, as well as the free item down in the Fey March. So 
growing more wide open. This is going to be another, you know, with, with this much open, you know, maybe you find the Darkness Crystal early, or maybe, you know, it's one of your last checks. Uh, so that's really going to impact, you know, whether or not we see a, a potential D-Machine grind coming up here. And we're going to also found, yeah. Yeah, another free one. <laughs> Uh, that might mean that the the end part of this run could be difficult. That rubicant in that is required in this one, in certain spots, can be a real nasty boss. Yeah, the the counter uh, fire twos, you get some fire threes. The uh, potential of a, that uh, glare attack, uh, all make Rubicon and yeah in, in a late game spot not not the most exciting person that you want to face up against yeah and if you find him in a spot like down at the bottom of the sealed cave um he can get really fast and really strong with his magic attacks too so um that's something to keep an out for an eye out for especially since we're finding a lot of these free um uh, bosses early um one other thing that we're going to have to see from Beardnerd is if he's going to go with the uh, Rivers McCown special of skipping early Fabul, which is going to mean uh, he might miss out on that early magma key if he tries to run everything before tr trying to route as many checks to Fabul in one and not double dipping. Yep, it'll be interesting to see what key item you get here because uh, that could lead you further down uh, baiting that Fabul check and potentially who is what you get as your reward out of the inn and just a glass helmet so maybe some good physical defense but not any progression and seeing a uh, strength <laughs> ring <laughs> oh that is nasty uh, you do not want to see the uh, fabul gauntlet here the alt gauntlet flag is on so you got to fight a bunch of zombies up here now uh, but a strength ring found in Silveria for Cassidy, uh, that's another one that's going to make um, uh, make Yang a lot more uh, powerful early early in the scene. Yep, strength ring, cat claw, um, and that I believe it was a headband as well. It's going to be plus fifteen strength, which is of uh, immense value to an early game Yang. With Yang, he relies more on the strength uh, and the strength stat and the uh, attack multipliers gained by them, since he doesn't have the really high power weapons that somebody like Kane's going to be able to have access to. Yep, and you know this is <clears throat> this is a very interesting place to find the gauntlet. There are typically on the overworld the the. Bombs? I, I, I can't recall the name of the item, but a cast the fire spell, uh, which would be a, a very helpful, uh, particularly in getting rid of those those undead characters. Yeah, if we had a flame spear instead of the uh, blizzard spear, that would be helpful too. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, quite a few things, but this, uh, a bomb could one-shot uh, majority of the, the characters you're going to run against here. Uh, Fireclaw at least will be nice to have, but you know, as few turns as possible is definitely what you're looking for. Uh, Beardnerd making uh, use of the Cure 2 on Tella uh, since uh, most of the monsters in, up here are undead and so they take damage from that uh, Cure 2 spell. And that's probably going to be the, the most powerful attack Tella has. Uh, since he doesn't learn, remember the spells until after this fight. Yep, Cecil transforms before the fight. Um, unfortunately, Tella is still racking his brain for uh, <laughs> these additional <laughs> spells. Like, how do I cast Sight? Maybe he knows it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, one or two, but it's it's... Not, nothing of immediate value besides like Cure 2 in this fight. The, the, the monster that really kind of trips up most of the strategies that you like for AoE up at the uh, top are these souls. Uh, because even though they are ghosts, they do not count as undead. Uh, they, they, uh, they heal when the Cure 2 comes. Uh, if you use fire magic on them, they absorb that as well. 
they're just kind of um, a nasty to deal with. Um, but luckily, they're at this point, their hit points are not uh, too bad. So taking them out with physicals isn't that bad. Yep, they're they're definitely the the one exception to the rule of the, the fire cast and bomb. But uh, we'll see. I believe if this is fight four or fight five, um, you, you might see the the dance party as the final fight. Oh no, it's just the the Lilith here. The double but Lilith. The seven uh, <clears throat> seven of the undead zombies. At once, I believe six or seven is uh, a lot to just try to take down with physical attacks. Another interesting thing about this fight being here, though, is you still get experience for the fights uh, in the alt gauntlet up here, uh, whereas this boss spot is usually one that does not give experience points. And those Liliths are some of the best sources of experience in the overworld. So this is actually kind of a boon experience-wise uh, for our uh, young party here. Oh, very much so. Uh, getting the gauntlet in a spot that typically doesn't give experience is, you know, the, the best of the best you can make of, you know, having to complete all five of those fights. Uh, maybe wishing that you had that Rosa just for that XP, but we do have all of our underground checks here, so. We'll see if uh, if sirens decide to rear their head here in this seed, or a relatively early darkness crystal as well. Also true. Still looking for a uh, for a fifth character though. I, I would I would I would be reticent to make that D machine play before I figured out uh, who my final character at least for the for the time being in the party was going to be. Well, if you've got that Darkness Crystal, you've got the Lunar Check for for a character as well. So if you get Rosa oh, you're right. and whoever's <laughs> up on the moon. Some, some poor, poor theorizing there. Uh, maybe that's why I'm in the playing matches as well. <laughs> uh, hey, I've already been eliminated, but then I don't... I can't even remember that you need the hook for the pink tails, so... I'm probably best to be on the sidelines here. <laughs> so Beardner still doesn't have that magma key. I'm. I, I guess I'm not incredibly surprised, but if I'm if I'm Cassidy here and I did get that magma key, uh, a large part of me is just thinking, you know, look for Siren, see if I can get a coffin, an hourglass, tape, you know, one fight, and then you know you can trivialize. At least these these additional early checks in the overworld. But then that's kind of a double-edged sword because if there aren't sirens available in shops, then you might want to save that until you can get a really high experience fight, like a double King Ryu fight, if you're going to get the most out of one siren. So I think what you said is one argument, but I think that's the counter-argument of I'm not saying either one is right. It's just that's what you've got to weigh. Oh, definitely. And another fight where you would have potentially liked to see the, the Thunder Claw, but I think uh, that Lit Three is going to do just 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 a fine amount of damage to get through that. And there's the package from uh, the Baron in as well. So that's one more character check as you look for uh, potentially filling out. Who your end party is going to be? Yeah, remember when Tella learns all his spells? Those level three elemental spells, at least for the early part of the game, are very powerful. His stats are bad, so like trying to depend on them without hitting, especially if you're not hitting weaknesses, is going to be kind of rough in the latter half of the seed. But for right now, that's a lot of damage that they could dish out. Oh, one hundred percent. This also is is one of the sneakier boss hunt spots. Um, Birner very cleverly checking the mist cave. Uh, it's a nice thing when you have an additional reason to route it in. But yes, I I think we've all cast a virus with Tella and had it hit for two hundred and forty against an end game boss. <laughs> Realize that this, this, Tella's just not going to get anything done for you in the end. Absolutely. 
Uh, and so we see Rydia as the character here. It looks like Birnard is not going to go through with it, um, which is understandable. It is long. Um, the, that's something that he's got to keep in the back of his head because that there is a boss check at the end of it, and we still haven't found Bahamut or Rubicon, which are required. So um, to, uh, trying to avoid going through that cutscene here. Yep, and fortunately, maybe if if Fjernir is following the the Rivers Manifesto, uh, no other choices to try to find access underground right now than uh, going over to Kabul. And I wouldn't, you know, as much as you know, I made a play uh, a, a a little comment about it earlier. I imagine that if he found the hook at Baron. He'd still probably go here to Kabul first uh, on the off chance it was the Magma Key because it's just so much faster than going through the hook route. Oh, yes. Without a doubt, uh, you you still you still typically will route in Kabul. Um, the, the argument, the primary argument, just to describe it, is you know, if you do get underground access, you can at least do Shila 1 at the same time as the first time you go to Kabul. But if you don't get... Uh, the magma key from any of the other spots. Uh, you definitely, you don't want to, you don't want to run down a terrible route just to realize that you left your your early access down there. Well, Cassidy's climbing down, and Beardnerd is doing a check that we've seen before. I uh, want to give a quick moment to shout out uh, the rest of the restream team. We have Iker doing the tracking today, and Dathis on the restream, and. Uh, uh, Anything vanilla, you can blame on him in the uh, in in the chat. <laughs> that is the the vanilla seed roller, as I I keep trying to get everybody to uh, join in on saying. Um, but yes, they did a great job, and if anyone wasn't around about forty five minutes to an hour ago, the Discord was not functioning. Um, it, it took a lot of additional effort from from Dathis in particular. Uh, to make sure that everything got going with with some help from our other friends but then definitely ike here as well on the tracking we're, we're very happy to have both of you with us here i'm also uh happy to have this ice blue uh rosa uh fab palette this is great i haven't seen this one before and it's it's a beautiful design thank you to skull kitty on that one Yes, definitely Scala and this uh, this background which we have here uh, only for this week, one week only. So take it in as much as you can. Uh, we've gone from uh, the the Swiss rounds, which was the early morning, or uh, with the sun rising, and, and we're here in the play-in games. If you notice, our background has changed to a more faded. Uh, uh, end of day type look which is very pretty looks like uh beer nerd is heading over to agart now while cassie is uh finishing up with the uh under or the last over world check which is that um where where we found rosa and um beer nerd is going to be the first of our runners to Drop the magma key in the well in Agard and have underground access. So this is this is an interesting time because this is, you know, three fifths of your remaining shop checks, maybe excluding the coal shop. Um, you're hoping to find sirens. You're hoping to find some of those items that are gated by here, but also in in your mind, which. Uh, Rex, maybe what would you what would be your plan here if, if you don't find uh, sirens or any additional experience options here? If I don't find sirens, I'm gonna probably check to see if I can do Dwarf Castle. Um, it's only two bosses there. They're worth they're a lot easier than the uh, Fey March bosses in general, and they're worth a pretty good chunk of experience just by themselves. So that would probably be my check as well as getting a, uh, being able to check a character. So I would do the rounds of shops. Uh, the ones that I'm usually looking for at this point are Bacchus Wines, Sirens, and Cure 3s. And the Hourglass is a nice bonus there, too. If you find them, that's wonderful. 
Yes, I usually buy whatever my whatever my allowance will let me in that situation when I find them, and then mark that down uh, as somewhere maybe I would like to return to because those are very essential for grinding those gold dragons on the moon, if that's what it comes down to. But we have seen a majority of the free bosses, so it's it. it I'm, I'm interested to see who's gating the dwarf because this first fight at Dwarf Castle can be mighty rude. It can be, and uh, not surprised Birner is not checking that right now. Going to do a shop check first, because if we do have access to sirens, then um, then you can level up whatever party you've got right now to a place where beating those dwarf castle bosses are not going to be too much of a difficult thing. Definitely, and uh, there's the seed validation. It looks like an appliance. Like a I, home I appliance installer, the... I think. Yeah. Maybe somebody <laughs> checked in. Okay, thank you, that, Captain. If you're asking what's the true first thing that I do when I go underground, it's talk to that dwarf. <laughs> so that's uh, still still remains to be put in as an objective, but I, I'm I'm rooting for it to show up at some point. <clears throat> uh, D one five five A seven one five F one E D. Uh, never seen a runner check chest in this game before. I think you might see more of that, especially coming next week, uh, when we start getting to the next uh, level of uh, of of uh, of this of the uh, tournament with the brackets. That those Miss Cave ones, I've done a little bit of studying on it. The Miss Cave uh, ch chests are a bit higher tier than a lot of the other overworld ones, so you might see that more. Yep, Mist Cave Watery Pass is also uh, a, a, a fan favorite and a, and a runner favorite in the in the T Pro setting. With uh, with someone with Exit, particularly the Watery Pass has higher level loot, <clears throat> and you can uh, you can get the heck out of there pretty quickly with the Exit spell. So I don't think I recall uh, what was in the what was in the what was in the town that Birner just checked, but I don't believe I saw sirens. So we are down to one check to potentially get more XP. Otherwise, it's really up to uh, earning that XP. And we're going to see that Fee March Vanilla Rat check, uh, Rat Tail check here, just to protect ring. No key item there. It is a very useful item, though, a very good defense, especially for your casters. Just gear twos and assure in that shop, so no sirens there either. So, um, yeah, unless we missed it, uh, it doesn't look like sirens are available, at least at this point. They still could be in Evelyn. They still could be on the moon, but we don't have access to those shops yet. Yep. So this is this is when your 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 party has a decent amount of leveling. Yeah, I've checked this lunar sparkle here just just for for my own greedy purposes. Oh, and that is a that is a wyvern. That's gonna be a no. That's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> and that sand ruby character looks to be Cecil. Uh, over on Cassie's screen, we got a peak there in Kaipo. Uh, so that, considering we've already completed Mount Ordeals, is a free paladin if we find that sand ruby. Uh, and we know we've seen a lot of the power of Cecil throughout this event. Yep, and it looks like Beernerd is going to make this uh, shield one check. So I, I know River's head turns every time somebody enters Fabul a second time without having his hand. <laughs> um, but this is uh, this is a decent play. Uh, it's you, you have to burn through about just under ten thousand hit points to get through that first dwarf castle boss, um, and you don't know who's the, at the top of the tower, um, and you know that there's a wyvern and a mom bomb, and in the spots that they're located at, there that's that's absolutely not going to be something you're going for yet. The other thing to consider is Birner took all the damage from those damage tiles in the uh, in the Fey March. And so 
routing it this way means that he's not going to have to have a heal, then do a boss check, then do that, then check Sheila. Like, it's just one less heal that you have to do. And those animation times uh, add up. Very true. Uh, any any way that you can save time is, is definitely important, particularly when you are racing for your tournament life here. Um, but you, you, in the same vein, you might want to take a take a save maybe next to Dwarf Castle or wherever your next place is going to be, uh, assuming that Sheila won doesn't give you something that you can immediately chase. Mjernir now heading to Kaipo as well. Probably going to check and see that Cecil is available. Uh, Cassidy going into the pot at the back of Dwarf Castle for a free heal there. Uh, one of those uh, places that a lot of people take. That is one of the faster ways to do a full heal. It's faster than a cabin, faster than an inn. Uh, and looks like going to go through the back door. Maybe we're going to see a full loot of uh, uh, Dwarf Castle. And I believe I've seen uh, some of Cassidy's races earlier, and I think this is something that he likes to do, is a lot more looting. Uh, we saw him loot the uh, Misty Cave earlier, uh, and now going through here, so this uh, seems to be part of his strategy. There's a fair amount of treasure in the Dwarf Castle. If, <clears throat> if you're still you know, on the hunt, or you're looking for some additional uh, gold. So I fully understand this play and uh as... if you especially when you've got uh tell us you've got access to the exit spell since you can exit out of um the dwarf castle and get back to the um the area where your airship is so that's just uh another thing like that i'm more likely to loot dwarf castle if i've got access to exit yeah uh, a lot of the chests are, are a little far away, and that was the adamant from Sheila One, which not immediate value, but we do know that you are required to at least get that Cecil from the bed. Um, and that is one additional shop check if you do go through the uh, the path of forging that Excal. But well, Cassidy is going to be the first to check this uh, Dwarf Castle boss and finds, looks like Octomam in the first spot. That's a bit scary. This is a, a pretty high level physical boss for this part of the game. Um, we'll see uh, how Cassidy handles this. Uh, I know that I think I saw Illusions for Sale in a shop somewhere. I'm not sure if that was on Cassidy or Beer Nerd's screen, and I don't know whether or not they bought them. Well, with this early Yang um, and the party that you have, there is there is one specific... Uh, weapon that that would make this fight a lot simpler. Uh, ye old thunderclaw, I believe you're talking about. <laughs> uh, but I don't believe I don't believe we've seen uh, either one of our racers find said thunderclaw yet. So um, that's that's true. It, it is not. I mean, it, it's it's very overpowered item, so it is not easily come by. You know, in, in any of the shops. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So they have basically caught back up to each other. The lit three is, is going to do well. Early Tella showing showing additional strength here. Yeah, especially taking uh, advantage of whenever there's an elemental weakness. But you see how strong uh, Octoman can hit there and one shots Rosa over on Beardard's screen. Yep, this is, you know, when, when sirens don't show up and, you know, you don't get that early darkness crystal, um, you know, not saying it was the right routing choice, but considering you ran into that that gauntlet, you know, had you had Rosa in your party during that, she would have gained, you know, at least a few additional levels. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think the, the fact that Mount Ordeals was one of our objectives in this kind of made it so that um, the priority of completing that was more important than the priority of doing Baron Castle. They're, they had no way of knowing that that uh, call was in that spot there at the time, too. So, oh, Of course not. And, and Rose is going to get... I mean, these, these dwarf bosses are some pretty good value for uh, the amount of damage that you have to do with, with 
as far as XP is concerned. And we have a double Thunderclaw Dwarf Castle. Need, need that Thunderclaw. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and we see Sid as the character um, that we that joins the party here in Dwarf Castle. Um, Sid is a little bit um, it's a little bit late for his most useful part. Uh, he can he's known as a somebody who can really carry the overworld because he's a bit higher level than most of the other uh, start than really any of the other starting characters that you can have in this fight set. Uh, he's got pretty good strength, but he's very slow, and his uh, equipment pool just isn't up to uh, the standards of a cane or a Cecil. So he can serve some use as an anchor and or a chemist in the late part of the game, but uh, in general, I think he's not the sort of character you want to find at this stage of the game. Yeah, those lit threes going off almost at the same time, and, and you're 100% right, Rex. I mean, outside of the early overworld, Sid's only benefit is very high XP growth throughout the game. So if you have a curse ring, he's a great guy to throw in the center and, and you know, let get XP and then play that chemist role. But otherwise, you're not excited. You're not very thrilled that, that Sid was your reward from, from this particular spot. Right. You'd much rather have... Uh, ooh, Sand Ruby is the item. <laughs> You'd much rather have the Sand Ruby. <laughs> but I think uh, like going in and cashing in uh, the Sand Ruby and getting Cecil instead of uh, Sid, I think might be the play. I, I mean, um, tell me, would you swap any other characters out for Cecil? Would you... Given yeah, that I can forge, that I have the ability to forge the legend... Uh, at least from Birner's perspective, if I had, if you know, if I had a curse ring, I would I would swap the cane. Uh, given the current party structure, I would maybe keep Kane with the expectation of swapping him out for somebody else to anchor. Given the likelihood of a curse ring now is you know very near to zero. It is Sid that uh, Birnard decides to ditch. It's not surprising. You have a Tella who you can throw in the middle because um, you're going to need at least a relatively low agility character here moving forward. But uh, I always like, you know, if it comes down to it, having... Having that Sid with the curse string is my favorite person to leave, you know, in the center for the rest of the game. Well, Cassidy also looting at least one check in the uh, upper part of the cave to the Fey March. Um, trying to this avoid that warrior's chest here, I, I believe. And it's, uh, it's a gamble for sure. There's a rune ring though, which is certainly a nice pickup. Beardard heading straight to Kokel's hut to forge that Excalibur. If you've got a Cecil who can use it, get that Excalibur right away. We get to see this. Uh, ooh, Leviathan Summon, uh, Stardust Rod for sale. I think there was at least something else that was spicy. This is a nice looking shop here. Oh, there is a curse string there on Beardard's screen. Yeah, and Cassie Bone just opened the chest. It was in the Fey March right there. So okay. both of our runners do have access to a curse ring. Oh, ribbons, Zeus gauntlets, Leviathan summons, and Stardust rods in Cocoa's shop. That is one stash shop. The coal has the goods. More often than not, the coal has all the goods. Not to mention that you're getting an X cal on top of it. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bernard may have uh, mis mismenued there a little bit. It looks like may have accidentally bought and sold one of the ribbons there. So that's unfortunate, but still going to be better than he was before after getting the seeing what's available in these shops here. So, uh, Get Coop to answer your question. It was the Sheila 1 check, which uh, Cassidy has not made. So does not have that availability yet. Also, I 
who was it Cassidy who had checked the uh, the character in the bed? Yeah, both of them had checked the character in the bed, so they knew that it was Cecil. But Cassidy doesn't have knowledge that the adamant is readily available, so doesn't have like a super uh, weapon for Cecil. So the priority isn't as high. So might be waiting till like maybe he finds the darkness crystal to try to do a, um, a slingshot on Cecil before um, before picking him up. Whereas Beardard knows that he's got an Excalibur waiting for him with that. And he's like, I just want to get Cecil online ASAP, even if I don't have access to a D-Machine grind or, you know, a, a moon fight to really boost that uh, slingshot. Yes, 100%. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if after this shopping, uh, Sheila 1 becomes a priority for Cassidy. But I do like this. This tower play here from Beer Nerd. Um, not that there are many options available, but... Yeah, we're uh, running out of places to check. <laughs> Those uh, Fame Arch bosses are looming large. Yep, and Sheila 1 doesn't offer progression. Uh, it does give you a nice weapon, but... This is... Ooh! Is that Rubicon or is that Elements? Well, there's only one way to find out, and first we gotta we gotta see him dance. Here we go. Let me show you the dance of my people. And it is Ruby, so required tower. And that Blizzard Spear gonna gonna be very nice to have. I believe there was an ice brand as well. Yeah, if you still have, well, yeah, I think given the elemental weakness at this level for Cecil, the ice brand is going to be better than the Excalibur. But Blizzard Spirit Cane is, is going to be doing a majority of the work. And my or guess is, given... uh... oh, go ahead. My guess is uh, Beardnerd's going to want to try to keep uh, Cecil alive through this. He probably wants to get that experience on him as quickly as possible. Yep, this is this and this and Dwarf are very, very good XP. But you wonder, you have the cane in the back row, which is isn't ideal for zerking up Kane and taking the gamble with Beardner that I always take as well, which is just throwing out some ice threes, hoping that <laughs> hoping that they actually catch Ruby at the right time. Yeah, it's uh, he, and he does it. He gets it with the open with the open robe. Uh, that's the uh, the important timing there. Um, Looks like the glare isn't as strong as it could be in some places. It doesn't one-shot Yang there. So that's that's a little bit of a relief. The uh, magic stat up at the top of the tower here is not very good. And uh, Beer Nerd able to take down that uh, Rubicon, get all of his characters alive. So Cecil's going to get a bunch of levels here. 23 levels 23, in one 23, yeah. That's, that's some decent levels right there. And this would be, as much as I love the Thunderclaw, as we mentioned before, you know, this is another one of those elemental fights that you are, would be very happy to have an Ice Claw. And we see the Darkness Crystal as the item up here, too, so that is also huge. Because um, now we've got that um, D-Machine grind available to us. Um, so we'll see if Cassidy, since Cassidy d hasn't picked up Cecil yet, if that's going to be the plan to do a D machine grind to try to slingshot Cecil. Well, it's certainly, certainly going to be on the table now. And it, now we're down to really a, a question of we're looking for the pink tail and we're, we're wondering where Bahama is, is hiding, waiting to count down to five. The Ice 3 hits while the uh, Cloak of Flame is open, and Cassidy has defeated Rubicante as well. We'll be getting his Darkness Crystal, completing objective number one. 
Um, so yeah, been doing pretty good here. Yep, so maybe a minute or two behind also hasn't done the Sheila 1 check, uh, which, you know, is definitely giving a slight edge to Beardner having that Excal, particularly going forward. And this is going to be an interesting because there's definitely. Um, did Cassidy go down to Sylph Cave before going to Tower or not? Cassidy has been. He went to the Steel Cave after doing Dwarf. So Sheila 1 might be less of what you're looking for now that you have Darkness, but you know it might also be something you want to check off the list before you make any rash decisions. Because if he went down to the bottom of Sylph Cave, then I bet he'll check uh, Sheila 1. But if he postponed that, well, it looks like he is going to go down there anyways. So, okay. So... Looks like Cassidy's not going to be missing out on the knowledge about that adamant and that Excalibur. So, um, meanwhile, Beardnerd flying up to the moon because I think we've exhausted of... the Earth checks, yeah. other than those bot the Feywire bosses. And Mom Bomb and Wyvern still, still not very palatable at this point. With that uh, cursed ring, the Wyvern might be doable, um, but. It would be very risky. Um, well, at least you'd be able to survive the opening Mega Nuke. Getting through the yeah. rest of the fight will be tough still. Um, but that Mom Bomb in Asura is one that I think nobody wants to touch. <laughs> no, that's going to punch real hard. Uh, it's going to be... It's going to be slow, and the added the added HP is not going to make that any more appealing. But it looks like uh, we saw sirens for sale in the uh, in the Hummingway abode, so that's gonna all probably dictate the uh, grinding strats. And we see Porum as the character on the moon. I think with Rosa already in the party, uh, probably not gonna see the runners decide to keep Porum here. No, Porum. Uh, well. Forum has been the hero of some seeds. I don't think I don't think she's gonna be the hero of this one. I think um, the the more recent trend has been people like Porum early, like Rosa late. Um, the early berserk spell that Porum gets, and the fact that she learns exit naturally is is probably the two biggest advantages that she has um, over Rosa. But by the time the end game comes, um, those are less of a factor as to Rosa's survivability to Big Bangs in the Zerubus fight. Yep, there's some discussion in chat uh, about whether you should go D Machine here. Personally, uh, I agree with Beer Nerd's play. If you have two hourglasses and you have sirens, um, you can get a good amount of XP from these dragons. So the D machine, given that we're 50 minutes into the seed, it's people always say maybe under an hour, but with our, with Siren's Hourglasses and uh, direct moon access here with with a wheat caster, you can get decent XP um, and continue to you know search basically for this pink tail while hoping that Bahamut shows shows its face somewhere around here. The other consideration is hourglasses were for sale in one of the underground shops. So even if uh, he only has two of them right now, uh, if he wants, he can buy even more. Yep. So you'll you'll be able to get the levels that you need off of those. Oh, he has three hourglasses. Even even maybe a singular hourglass would be enough to get what you need to at least try to face down some of these new bosses. The powered up Tella also means having access to weak for this King Ryu fight, which is actually pretty important because if you're trying to fight these King Ryus at low levels, um, it's oh he's Ooh, out of MP. Access to weak. Don't do it on the dragons. Don't do it on the dragons. Okay, good choice. Uh, Cecil Rosa here. That's where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Uh, taking down, getting oh, only 10 MP. He didn't have anything either. He, <laughs> the, tanks are, the tanks are low. Yeah, you might just zerk up Cecil here and just wait it out. It's a, it's going to be a pretty long fight, even with that Excalibur. Doing only 1500 there, that's a, that's pretty low. If we had found like a... Oh, um, got it up for one week. If we had found a um, um, Dragoon Spear or uh, or something like that, uh, that does that extra damage against dragons, then Kane could just... You'd have no need for the week at that point, but... Yeah. Oof. Two Sykes, 10 MP. You're only going to get one, I think, from each dragon. So you're... Yep. You're waiting it out now. But able to get one of them down... Um, Got that uh, life glitch on there, so you get uh, three King Ryu deaths there. Uh, 90,000 experience in one fight, that's pretty good. Yep. And, I mean, having done Sheila 1, uh, knowing who the Fae March bosses are and for how few key items we have, uh, my, my anticipation here is the moon might not be haunted this time. It could still be haunted, but the probability that it's that it's haunted is is less than uh, <laughs> than it was at the start of the seed. Uh, now Cassidy at the Lunar Palace um, went there first. Uh, Bearded went to the Hummingway abode first, seeing probably checking the character, seeing if it's something that Cassidy wants to join before checking the shop. I think that's a reasonable play. Might also go and do the peek into Bahamut Cave and see if, who the boss is there as well. Yep, and depending on what you have that you want to sell, um, it, you know, you might want to check this character before you get rid of, you know, edge edge related weapons or you know things of that nature. So, Absolutely. Depending on my inventory, I it, it's it's the fifty fifty which one I'm gonna hit up first. Finding those sirens. Oh, okay. Chasing <laughs> way back down. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I do want some of those. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I'm like, whoa. I think that's a real strong commitment to the D machine play if you're doing that. Uh, but now it looks like Cassie going back to the um, blue planet, probably either going to buy the hourglasses uh, from the shop or it's going to choose to use eggs to grind. Yep, you can grind some quick eggs here. Um, you're going to want to grab that. And uh, this is my favorite play ever is flying around on the blue planet with the Luna Veil. <laughs> uh, if only it could go underground. <laughs> blocking out the sun for all of, all of Troya. I remember finding out in the vanilla game that you could land the airship on top of the, like, flat mountains in uh, the underground, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I, I found that out by yeah. missing several Yeah, times. absolutely. Uh, buying the Ether 2s there makes me think that Cassie is still, might be considering the um, D-Machine play. Yep, this definitely looks like going for D-Machine. Um, gonna slingshot that Cecil, but a lot of levels already for Beer Nerd, and going to be able to get a lot more checks done. And not forging, not forging the X scale either. It looks like. I thought I saw somebody in the chat say that he did, but I, I did, I missed it. If he did. But yeah, we're seeing the uh, giant check here. So he bought so some they, sirens. Yeah. Um, we don't have an earth hammer or a uh, thunder glass. So I don't think this is a Mac Giant play. I think this is a this has got to be a D machine grind, right? I think we're definitely with with the fact that uh, he went and also purchased those ethers. Yeah, I think we're definitely looking at a D machine. Um, this is. Yeah, this is... Oh, and there's Bahamut. There's Bahamut in the lunar subterrain. Uh, 
Mom is counting down to bedtime right now, and you do not want <laughs> you do not want to find out what happens when she gets to zero. Well, um, uh, you called a PK. The moon is not haunted in this scene. This is uh, this doesn't look great uh, for Cassidy. We're we're still on a pink tail hunt, but those yeah those early levels very much. Uh, with the hourglasses, uh, I think giving a definite edge to Beer Nerd here. Um, question in the chat, Mr. Tanuki, what does the moon is haunted mean? Uh, we <laughs> should explain that. Uh, that's kind of uh, the thought that there's absolutely nothing that you need to complete the seed on the moon uh, would indicate a haunted moon because it's a ghost town. Yeah, there's there are yeah. always two schools of thought when you get the early access to the moon and one is i should go up there and fight everything on the moon because there are the potential for a lot of key items uh but there's also potential to just waste a lot of time and then have to backtrack yeah and i if you haven't heard that phrase then that's absolutely not a silly question so <laughs> uh, if you have other questions uh please ask we we try to answer as many as we can uh, but um, we we don't see all of them, but um, usually somebody in the chat can help you too. We see the Twin Harp and the Hook as the yeah. items for defeating Bahamut there. Still, Absolutely uh, not haunted. <laughs> now only the only the Pink Tail. Yeah, just need that Pink Tail now. So definite, definite edge to Beard Nerd here. Uh, we'll have to see where the pink tail is and, and what Cassidy's uh, strategy is post completing this D machine grind. <clears throat> but we are we are definitely we're one key item away. This is another free fight. Yeah, this has been the seed of the free fights for sure. Oh, did the got the yeah. hit off the Cecil a little too soon? Yeah, Bernard might have been just a little bit excited there. Uh, looks like Cassidy had to restart, going for the D machine grind again. So, um, hopefully, things will go better this time. Yeah, maybe I I was looking over at Bernard, but maybe didn't get the correct searcher. Yeah, it might have been the wrong. It might have been the wrong fight. And a power shirt, so not the worst thing to get, but uh, you're, you're only looking for one key item here. And that is, a, it's a pretty strong Yang now, although I probably would give that power shirt to Cecil. I think there's an argument for Cecil, and I think there's an argument for Yang. So... I think... Oh, I, don't, I, I definitely don't think either one is, is the correct answer, but... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I think if, it, if for me, it's like if it's Crystal Sword, I give it to Cecil no matter what. Uh, Excal, it's still super strong, but I think I still want to get more firepower out of Yang, and I think he gets more value from the strength boost than Cecil does. So that's but, fair. But I, I don't think it's bad to put it on Cecil in this situation either. And Cassidy once again finding the horseman. Looking like maybe just gonna take some levels off of it. Granted, I don't know the difference between you know, the value of the two. Um and maybe <clears throat> the uh the, the D machine chart is certainly not uh, the most easily read if you haven't <laughs> talked through it for a while, so uh, you can always pick wrong periodically. Ooh. And this is a Daffa Seed, as pointed out in chat. Oh, yeah. We got Vanillo Canadian Destroyer, the Ogopogo <laughs> himself. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is an endgame boss in an endgame spot. This is not an easy. Yeah. Fight. Of all the of all the vanilla places to find a vanilla boss, the the worst 
maybe, I, I in my opinion, would probably be Ogo at Ogo. Uh, Ogo at Ogo fighting a, with home with home territory is not a fun person to come up against. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, Ogo Pogo definitely has the home field advantage <laughs> for this fight. And now, I mean, you're chasing one key item. You you definitely wouldn't want to leave that spot, but. Uh, it's also one you can bang your head against quite a few times. If you don't get your damage output right, uh, and you don't get your heals up quickly, you're going to drop one or two party members before you even get a cure 3 or cure 4 off. And Cassidy is just not uh, finding that D-Machine fight. Um, something in the... Um, method that he's using to find it just isn't hasn't been working well i don't know how familiar everyone is with the chart but you technically are supposed to walk through the second location and then start pacing on those three tiles but i reset i reset after i get through those first two steps in the second room uh simply because i don't want to try to count out on the chart and look at you know how many steps i've taken when it's not just mapped out. Um, Unless Cassidy's using a different chart than the one that I'm familiar with. Yeah, and even reading that chart, like, you have to, you know, is the fight in the next room? Is the fight going to be X fight in this room? It was explained to me at some point, because it's also the same chart that the vanilla speedrunners use. So it's, it's either that, or you just, you just run these, the gamut of the searcher beamers and just hope really that the the one you get is the coin toss. And this is the oh there's there's that telelit three coming out uh, as we were discussing earlier with <laughs> 230 damage. Uh Really not enough there. Now that we're in that fight for Cassidy, uh, let's just hope that uh, nothing goes wrong. I think the setup is really nice. Uh, I always like to see Tella in the middle slot uh, when going through this, uh, this D-Machine fight because his stats are so bad. He's, if he's not in the middle spot that gets that accuracy boost on his spells, he has a tendency to sometimes miss on those weeks. And then if you're dealing with a um, an angry D machine that's not weakened, he can uh, wipe out a party very fast. Yeah, you don't want to... You particularly don't want to uh, hit a D machine with a physical attack if they haven't been weak, because then they will punch. And they they punch very, very hard. And Birner gets through this. Ogo fight very well. Luka key. So we have we have a few rabbit holes potentially available that, that might give Cassidy the chance to catch up here. I think it might depend on how if Birner feels like he's far behind, uh, then there, he might want to gamble on those rabbit holes before clearing out Moon. Uh, but I think like from what I can see here, what we're seeing in the seed so far, um, I think it makes more sense for him to complete the moon, lunar checks at this point. Um, oh, 100%. Of course, but of course we have more knowledge than he does. Yep. I'm saying merely like if if the rest of the moon doesn't yield that pink tail, uh, you have you have tunes, you have uh, Luffy key, Earth crystal still hasn't been found, Baron key still hasn't been found, Tower key still hasn't been found, um, Rat tail still hasn't been found. So there's there's a strong potential that uh, you know we we could see. We could see this red or this pink tail, excuse me, hiding relatively deep. That's right. Uh, Pan hasn't been found either, Beowulf. 
Correct. If this is behind like a long key item string, then that could give Cassie some time to catch up. It's going to get more difficult the further we go. The fact that it took Cassie a, a number of tries to find this has really put him uh, in the hole here, I think. Um, if he would have got it right away, I could have grinded to end game levels without having to do a couple resets here. He, then these fights that uh, Birner are fighting on the moon might have been easier for Cassie. I would have been able to make up some time there. But the, I think the fact that sirens were available and then Cassidy slipped on this D-Machine grind a little bit has given Birner a big lead here. Yep, this was this was really how uh, the my second loss, I went 0-2. So my 0-1 game, I decided, hey, I'm going to go the D-Machine. And I, I only had one objective left, and I had hourglasses, and I had sirens, and I... And it turned out that the, the one boss that we were hunting was just sitting there right at the Ogo Pogo spot. Um, so, you know, when you make a play like this, you have to hope the sea goes as long as possible because that's really where you benefit. And we see this Mega Sisters fight over in the Wyvern spot. Um, actually, not as scary as they could be in our other spots. The magic stat isn't as low. Now, the uh, physical attacks that uh, Cindy in the middle dishes out are nasty in that spot, but the uh, Delta attack isn't as strong as it is in other places. We see the tower key there, so that's yet another rabbit hole. Um, but the more rabbit hole items you find on the moon here, the less likely it's going to be one of those long chains. And it's going to be more about picking the right uh, one of these items to check out to see what's happening. Yep, there are. You have a few choices now. Um, not, I mean, not even including the bosses, which who could, you know, also be holding the, the goods here. So if we don't see if we don't see Pinktail from the, one of these last two checks, it's going to get interesting. Uh, one interesting thing in Cassidy's fight, uh, Cassidy's been taking uh, advantage of one of the um, things that we've kind of seen more of in this event than we had before, is using uh, an Ice 2 spell to finish off the D-Machine instead of a physical attack. The timing on the animation kind of gives you more of an opportunity to get a double life glitch on there. And we saw Cassidy get that double life glitch at least once I saw on there. And that's just going to reduce the number of dragons that you need to summon to get the grind where you want it to be. Yeah, the ideal party for getting that off would be uh, a Palom or a Rydia. Yeah. With the ice, too, as well. Uh, but if you have enough ethers and you have the patience... Um, you can you can really u utilize Tello for that. My way to do it is just put battle speed at six. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten triple. It's a really slow fight, but I've gotten triple life glitches off on that. So we find the Demist in the uh, vanilla um, vanilla uh, pale dim spot. So this is kind of an annoying fight. Uh, it's not super difficult. The, the physicals are strong, but not anything that are going to be too difficult for Birner to handle. Uh, it's just that Demist isn't really one of these fights that you can hand, that you can get by using Berserk, because every time you hit it when it's in the mist form, it counters with a Cold Mist. That Cold Mist yeah. is not going to do any damage, but it just takes so long. Yeah, it, it can slow down the fight. I've gone into this with an Avenger Sword equipped uh, a fair number of times, and you, you really have to ask yourself, is this is this worth and this boss is far enough away where uh you don't want to have to reset out and come back so cassidy has now ended the fight uh gets about 17 levels on each of his party members so uh gonna be a lot buffer now upper 40s that's a pretty good grind right there yep the the young is over 4000 hp it's a question of, is he going to fight these bosses as well? Uh, because this, knowing that we know where Bahamut is and 
uh, there's the only value for these bosses is going to be XP on oh, that CPU. That is not Ooh. ideal. That is not where you want to fight CPU. That's an annoying fight. And we see the reset there. Um, this is going to be good for Cassidy. I'm sure that it's going to linger in his mind. Like, is Bahamut in that second spot there? Of course, we know where Bahamut is, and this is going to be the right choice for Cassidy to back out of the giant at this point. Yep. And uh, Dark Paladin said in chat, you know, maybe the Fey March bosses are holding the pink tail. The only issue is the hook itself was at the uh, the ribbon spot. So that that deep dive into Moon is 100% required. We'll see if the rest of the Moon bosses are required. Yeah, not only was it in the uh, that spot, it was behind Bahamut. So you get kind of get two of the things that you need in order to complete it right in one one shot right there. Destiny landing the whale. Uh, looks like he is not going up to the moon, so we'll at least get some additional information here. But um, he might be doing same yeah. process. Oh, going to forge. Okay. Ah, uh, so he didn't do it before that fight, but this makes a, a lot of sense. You want to have that. Uh... But you don't need the Excalibur for the D-Machine fight, uh, but you're going to want to do it for any other bosses you fight afterwards. Birner gets the Baron Key. He's just finding almost all of the <laughs> uh, the rabbit hole items on the moon. Uh, yep. We'll, we'll see so if he we're... goes to Cape Bahamut next. Crystal, but we have we have a lot of options uh, on Birner's side, and uh. Only one of them is going to lead to what you actually want. So, what do you think? What is the what is the the cruelest way for this to go as Beardner goes into Cape Bahamut? I think it's got to be oof Maybe something like, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's it Because so many of the rabbit hole items were found, it's not like a big chain is going to be able to be gotten. I mean, there's the rat tail and earth crystal still out there, but that's not as long as it could be. If we have to do um, the sealed cave into Tower of Zot, into the rat tail or something like that, that might be. Yep, I'm, I'm trying to exactly. think what the longest would be, and it might be the Baron Throne. Excuse me, the Baron Throne into Earth Crystal. This is, I guess, I, I guess to your point, yeah, this is more of a, uh, you have too many choices and no way of knowing which one is right instead of, you know, having to chase one specific chain of events. But it does look like Cassidy is going to go down and fight these Fey March bosses. Now, interesting thing, if one of these Fey March bosses uh, leads to the Pink Tail, that's something that could uh, give Cassidy a little bit of a boost, uh, a, an opportunity to catch up. Um, because I'm guessing, and maybe I'm wrong, but Beernerd may, may prioritize these... Um, checks via the moon prior to doing the Fey March bosses. That that would certainly be on my on my high priority would be checking these moon items. Uh, this will be nice for us because we'll get some additional information. Um, yeah, Myra or Myra Neko pointing out Noko pointing out in chat. Uh, it could be something into earth into pan that leads to the rat tail and that actually doesn't lead to the pink tail um, right and then sends you down to the fey march would be probably the, the most cruel thing you could put that's, in the air that's probably what cassidy needs to have happen because um i think if something like that happens 
if Cassidy finds the pink tail through these uh, bosses down here in Fey March, I think there's a decent chance that when Cassidy goes up to the moon, the first place that he tries, because that's the first place a lot of people try when they're on the moon, is that ribbon spot, and that would have the rest of the goods that he'd need. So that's kind of, from what we're seeing, what Cassidy would need to catch back into this. If any of these other things, or if Bernard goes where Cassidy is now, then it's going to be really difficult. But it does look like he's going somewhere. He's going I was, to... I was least. going to mention uh, this would be a situation where I might have forgotten that I defeated D-Mist. Uh, Derek's hiding on the moon, and I pick up a bunch of items. I, I've, I've definitely been known <laughs> to forget to check this. And it's just another Excalibur, so that's one rabbit hole down. We are still, we're looking for the Earth Crystal, we're looking for the pan, the spoon, the rat, the pink tails. So we have uh, everywhere to check and nowhere looks really better than anywhere else. Although I, I, I think I might agree with this Baron play because you can get two checks out of it. Yeah, I think this makes uh, a, a lot of sense to go here first. Uh, for for Birner for exactly that reason. This also will completing this check will open up the the um, the Odin check, and that's going to be two potential key item checks. But first, we're going to see what the Wyvern gives Cassidy here. Ooh, just a heroin <laughs> robe. Not much in the way of value, but you you can heal up real quick and just go right into the next fight. Uh, it was a holy spell on Rydia. So she is she is completely online. She is wholly online. And so this... Uh, at these levels, after the D-Machine grind, uh, this uh, Mombomb, while still annoying, uh, I don't think is nearly as scary uh, as it would have been in the early part of the, this scene. Oh, I'm thinking Zerk that Cecil, and then, you know, whatever else you do is just subsequently less important. Yep. Yeah, that's ex <laughs> looks like Cassie is on the same <laughs> mind. Uh, Tilla takes a nap. I think that's kind of what he was expected to do here. Yeah, well, it's, it's not, that's, that's who you wouldn't have minded Mom Bomb to hit. That's like getting the nuke on your anchor in the Zeromith <laughs> fight. Yes, please hit my level level five, Edward. <laughs> oh, and Doctor Luge holding down the throne. Ah, uh, the evil mad scientist finally becomes royalty. <laughs> Should get a little crown on Balnav. I feel like <laughs> Balnav is actually the king in this situation. He kind of looks like he's got a little tiara or something. That's right, Jeevus. Thunderclaw, Thunderclaw, Thunderclaw. Yeah, that's... Granted, at the one point, there's <laughs> it's it's a lot less to worry about. Taking that hit with Cecil to drop the Tella, with the Curse String, I don't think that would be as high of a priority, but... Cassidy able to defeat the Mom Bomb before it goes into Explode Mode. Just the Spoon! That's rough. That's gonna be, um... Yeah, that is not good for Cassidy's chances here. Yeah, that may be the nail in the coffin uh, for Cassidy here. We really needed this to land to the uh, the pink tail for him to catch up here because now he's got to basically retrace anything that he does is something that Birner has already done. Um, yep, you, you would maybe taking that twin harp and that hook even the Baron Key, the Twin Harp, and the Hook, and, and exiting out of Moon would be not the most logical of plays. But given what, what we happen to know here in the booth, uh, the one of your one of your only chances to make up for this lost time. Yeah, at this point, it's it it, it would have to be something crazy like that. And um, at one twenty into the seed, I'm not sure if Cassie. Of course, we don't know what they're thinking, but if he's thinking that he's it depends on how far behind he feels. If he feels like he like those couple of resets that he did in the um, 
in the uh, in the D machine grind put him behind. This this play kind of makes me think he thinks he's behind because he's going to the Cape Bahama before the lunar subterrane. And I think if you feel confident, you go to lunar subterrane first. Yep, yeah, the the Fay March play would have would have been a, a decent indicator, but but mixed That's in true. with this Cave Bahama play as well is is a pretty good sign that that Casty knows that you're uh, you're looking for maybe some sort of rabbit hole to chase. But knowing again that that hook is down all the way all the way down. Um, that's going to be required before even being able to chase any of the rest of this from from what we know at least. And at this point, we don't even know what else he's going to have to pick up in order to be able to complete it because we don't know which rabbit hole is the right one. We do see what's going to end up being the elements fight down here and the Odin spot. Uh, this should not be too much of a problem for Beer Nerd at his levels. No, not at all. It will be... <clears throat> Will be a potentially something of value, but you know, again, as as we've seen, there are there are a lot of checks left, and no way of knowing which one's actually going to turn into something. Having two people who can cast berserk and three strong fighters, yeah, the, <laughs> this element fight goes down really quickly. This is a this has turned out to be a very strong party for Beardard. Just a white lance from this. Um, and he resets out of it. I, I actually like this play. For as strong as the white lance is, it's not my favorite weapon for Kane by a long shot. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't take the time. It would be nice for maybe this Aromas fight. Uh, taking the Luka key, they, if there's anything that would help Cassidy here, it would be if Beer Nerd goes down and takes on those Fame March bosses. That would be a huge one. Uh, another thing is, if this, if we're going for Sealed Cave to Earth Cave to Rat Tail, and that's nothing, and it's music that uh, hides the uh, the pink tail. That's the, yep. I think those are those are kind of the only things that I'm thinking at this point. Yeah, you're definitely right. Following following a chain from one of these items that leads into Earth Crystal that 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 does not play out is is maybe the best hope here uh, to catch up a lot of time. No value here from Cave Bahamut, unfortunately. Cassidy and Beardner just going to. Uh, this will be new information, at least. So, yeah, the best way for this to be a catch up would be it does Fame March bosses and then follows the wrong chain between uh, whatever leads to Earth Crystal. And here comes the key item check, and we have the Earth Crystal. <laughs> that's, that's maybe the beginning. This is a pretty long chain, and I think that means Beardnerd has to fight this boss and has to get out of here. He can't exit out of here, so he's going to have to either warp or walk out of this. Mylon Z, not a scary boss in this spot, I wouldn't. No, Excal Cestel is going gonna, is gonna... to... Just, just chop this. this. <laughs> yeah, this is, guy's gonna be in small pieces on the floor before you even halfway get through your your uh, your very threatening sounding script. Uh, question in the chat: The said, is Earth the play? It's your favorite check. It, I, I love the Earth Crystal check, but I think it, it's the if you're going with the logic, if you found an item, like if you used an item to find something, you want to finish that chain. So I think most likely Beer Nerd's going to go to Zot next, but we'll we'll see. I mean, different people have different theories, but that's kind of the most common one that I've seen. It's not not the play, but it's also you're down here. There are it's only one key item. That's true. And all you're doing is hunting key items, and there are two key item checks in the Fame Arch, and you're no longer afraid of those players or those uh, those people you're going against. So. 
This is this is six in one hand, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. I think that's that. I think you're probably right there, PK. I think the my mindset might have been more for like a race with a lot of people, where you're trying to just get whatever yeah. advantage you can, um, and the advantage of I'm going down this route. So if this route leads to it, I want to get there. When you only have one opponent that you're trying to eke out, then the more logical place of where there's more free or more key items that are available to you might be the right choice. But we'll see where Beerner decides to go. This is going to be the tower key check. So I here calling it correctly, although not with the Fey March, but I had actually forgotten about tower key. So this is uh, another not fast check, but this is going to let us know what, if this rabbit hole continues. Yeah, no, this is um, this is interesting. If this ends up being it, then this is the required double dip tower. If it doesn't, I, I think Fame Arch grows more attractive to Beer Nerd before, because it looks like maybe the logic here is clear everything from this area. That may be. Uh, one thing that um, is also worth noting is Cassidy has decided to go the top-down route in the Fey March, so is not going to be seeing that um, that Bahamut right away. Um, I think the top-down is also a bit indicative of feeling like you're a bit behind as well. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> unless I'm just, you know, in, in, a, in a bizarre move, that's... When I go top-down, it's because I am on, I'm operating under that belief that I'm that I'm losing and I need to make some sort of change. I would think Jeebus, uh, you know, maybe if it was in the Fey March, it, you might have seen it dot done, but given the Fey March bosses and given the, I, I would think if I'm Birner, you know, that my opponent did a similar grind to me. So you're either making these checks first and you're saving Fey March to last or your opponent my guess would be also did Moon and is now doing the exact same thing that I'm doing, which is just weighing a bunch of similar options. So Valvolus was the fight in the Super Cannon Room. Uh, a very easy spot to find uh, Val. Uh, there's some certain places where she's very difficult, but this was uh, basically a piece of cake. And now we're going to very shortly here see the item, see what this means for Beer Nerd here. Yep. It, everything, unless he goes Fey March, this is all going to be new information. Oh. Rat Tail. Not going to the Fame Arch first. Might be going to check that no boss spot of the Fame Arch or the Rat Tail before doing anything else. Also having to check to see if where where you left that where you left that hovercraft. And it is still at Damsey, and we haven't gone anywhere with that. Nobody's made the Evelyn shop check. Um, I don't think they felt they need to once they found the um, the sirens up on the moon. Um, there hasn't really been a priority for Bearder to head over to Evelyn, Cass uh, Evelyn Cave unless he was feeling desperate for Bacchus's. However, having two casters of Berserk in the party makes that less of a priority as well. It's an Avenger, so the, the dream is alive. And yeah, I, I mean, given that you got the hook after completing the Lunar Subterrain, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not looking for new characters... Uh, right. Like like you'd said, Rex. I mean, maybe Bacchus would be the the one thing that would entice you, but you're not on a boss hunt. Uh, you're not on a character hunt, so that eliminates some of it. Looks not taking like a save, but yeah, here we go. Get your get the harps out. <laughs> We've got a music check here before going up to Zot, which makes sense. I mean, a lot of runners like to route these two um, together. Uh, and uh, do the doing the music check first makes sense because after doing Zot, you end up at Baron. So having both of these together is probably 
Well, honestly, probably going to end up being really good for me. Yeah, I mean, skipping the Fey March, uh, again, would have been the, the one thing that would have maybe given up a certain amount of time. Clearing everything else that you found on the moon is definitely playing to your advantage, considering uh, whether you know it or not, your opponent you know, went and did the D machine and then went down to the Fey March. So these are these are the right checks to be making, even if, you know, one by one, you're just eliminating the wrong ones to find the right one. I would have taken a save. I would have at least taken a save uh, just outside of Troya before I went in here. Yeah, by not um, by not making a save there, you're basically committed to going through everything in this fight. Like, not that it's going to be too difficult, but if this isn't the pink tail, and you could reset and be right out in Zot, that's just a little faster. But now we're going to quiet down a little bit here because it is time to listen to DJ Spoonie B's rocking tunes. the chat we see we got a lot of ddr fans there it looks like <laughs> I was enjoying um, those comments even if the fight itself didn't last uh too long oh man the pan it is not directly the pink tail This is this is like a branch instead of a chain, but it is it is something. Yeah, this has been this is very close to a seventeen out of seventeen seed. We an, an interesting thing we haven't seen the pass yet either. So this is uh, if Pan isn't holding both items, uh, it's it's going to be holding. At least the pass, because that oh. would Earth Crystal would have to be another key item. So it looks like um, Bernard is not going to Zot right away, and I think this kind of makes sense. You get more checks in a shorter amount of time by going and checking the pan instead of uh, going to um, Tower of Zot. 100% and DJ ATC just gifted five subs to the chat. So thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. So yeah, I would take this pan. I mean, it's two checks versus one. It's no bosses. But the way that this is gone, it, it, if I'm doing this right now, I'm like either, either, either place I go is going to be the wrong one. And there's the Artemis bow. So, not yet value. Cassidy, getting close to clearing the moon. I was going to find that vanilla Ogopogo here. Uh, Beer Nerd now heading back up to the overworld. Um, my guess is that the rat tail check is the next one. Oh, no, Sheila 2 first. That makes sense. Sheila 2, the Brat Tail was turned in, I believe, for the Avenger. Yeah, I'm getting everything all mixed up here. I mean, I have the whole seed. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, this, 
This might be a wipe to Ogo as well. I don't know. Yang's hitting very hard there. Might be able to uh, uh, eke this out. We'll see. And it's... there is the pass at Sheila too. Okay, so... If I'm, if I'm beer nerd in this situation, I'm... I'm sitting here like I, I have to be behind just for the for the mere fact of I just checked everything else besides the Fae March and got it wrong. So do you go to Fae March where there's two checks, but we know that that's nothing, or do you go to Zot? That is an interesting question. Um, I I'm probably going Earth Crystal. Yeah, I probably I probably go Fae March. I'd be wrong, but I'd probably go Fey March. <laughs> so there's, so you're saying there's a chance. What was all that one in a million talk? Uh, Cassidy it, with with a chance. I, I think it's still it's still gonna be tough for Cassidy to catch up. Um, he needs to go down to Sealed Cave as soon as possible after completing the moon. Get yeah. the Earth Crystal and go straight to Zot. I mean, I'm not going to say it's impossible for him to make these choices, but I I think these are not... Even if you're feeling behind, I don't think that's the routing that you make. I 100% I, I agree. I'm not... Uh, I'm not holding any false apprehensions that Birner doesn't have a, a pretty substantial lead even going to the Fey March here, but... I like I like to try to run at, you know the, the possible situations that gives the the person oh trailing I, whatever opportunity they might get. <laughs> I'm with you there. There, like that, it's not impossible. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Yeah, it's improbable. It's certainly improbable, but. This Fey March play, I mean, yes, it's it's logical. Um, out in chat, you might be thinking, how, my opponent might be done if it did happen to be in the Fey March. You know, that's the other side of it, but it, metagaming with just one opponent is a lot more difficult than metagame, metagaming with a lot of people in the race. Like, if, if this was a big like 40 person race like we've had in some other events and you see a bunch of dot duns relatively early and you full clear the moon and you haven't found anything then yeah i think that's there but with only one other person like there's a reasonable chance that they're doing a very similar play to you so it's it's really hard to make that call i'm 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 with you i'm with you 100% i uh, my only counter is is that if I just chased Harp, Luca, Baron, um, Rat Tail. That's a lot of checks, yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe I'm going to make the one random check because I've been fading the Fey March for so long that, it, you know, maybe maybe that's just, maybe that's just, you know, the play to continue on. You know, but I, not, I agree. It's. <laughs> Metagaming against one person, if you don't really know the person either, is 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 not not anything that you you know not something you're gonna get right consistently. And takes the mega nuke. Oof. Kind of sat there. I was like, is, "Was that just one of those like I forgot who was here? Oh God! Like I've used too many ATB ticks to get." Oh, he doesn't have star veils. Uh, Maybe missing that's... star veils. Oh. That might be it. Uh, so he's not going to end up with that spoon. Not that that's a big deal. Um, but resetting. Um... Maybe going to try to cast wall here. Yeah, moving Rosa up to the top spot, I think that's to try to get the wall off first. Adjusting the battle speed. Yeah, he's going to go for it again. Uh, it looks like at first he was like, let me get out of this. And now he's like, you know what? I think I can beat this. 
Meanwhile, Cassidy back on the blue planet yeah. is going to Baron first. Uh, this, when we uh, mentioned Bierner doing it, <laughs> like it yeah. seemed like the right choice. Now it's like, come on, Cassidy, go to Seal Cave. Oh yeah, sealed would be sealed would be the right choice, not the logical choice. But a wall and an Avenger sword and a dream. Oh no! Oh, he just swung. Okay, that wasn't the Avenger. This wyvern is going to be fast. I wouldn't say that this is a free fight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Decently not, well. Not as scary as it could have been. That's a, that's a high level Cecil though, so it doesn't speak to how much damage anyone else is going to take from it. That's true. Cecil has uh, available a lot of good armor. Uh, Yang would probably take a lot more magic damage at this spot. Yep. But Rosa just eats it for, for I think, breakfast. I think Rosa has that tiara and a white shirt. So <laughs> maybe even that protectoring too. Who knows? Yeah, it, she's doing fine. I would say gets through this fight. As as we sit here hoping that Cassidy This was this is the routing you saw from Beer Nerd, but if you go Luca if you go Luca next, that's really the, the dream you're going for here. The, the sad thing is, by uh, Cassidy making this decision to go to Baron first, I think he's basically committed himself to going to the Odin check next. Mm hmm Beernerd Beer Nerd knows now there's only one spot. <laughs> there's only one place left that hasn't been checked, and that is the Tower of Zot. So yeah, probably insurmountable. Also has the pass uh, from that pan check. So you know, not all who wander are lost, but save uh, some additional time here against Cassidy. Real play would be waking up a Baron, flying over to the Baron uh, Chocobo Forest, and then taking a Black Chocobo over to uh, <laughs> use the Pass of Troya. We're going in swag style. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Pick up the moon. Or the lunar wheel. I mean, that's basically your only choice if you end up taking the uh, the red airship to Toria, or to Zot. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I think every runner's made certain mistakes along that, <laughs> along those lines. That dang red airship, the Falcon, having uh, to land, having to land, and then walk across the bridge, <laughs> just. Shaking your head the whole way. The other swag thing would be wake up in Baron, take the serpent road to Mysidia, and take the big whale to Toria. <laughs> like, I like where your head's at, Rex. You need to see that serpent road. I gotta come up with a suggestion for that one. Ooh, uh, that uh, white hitting on the elements, healing Rubicon for nine oh, no. points is not going to be good. He just. Oh, I thought that, I thought Cecil maybe already had Zerk. There's fire three. That hurts. Yeah, the single target fire three. 
Kane definitely not having a blizzard sword, blizzard spear anymore there. Probably that white lance, which is going to be why it only jumped for like 400 damage. Going to take the fight again as well. Turner pretty, pretty strongly in, in control of his own fate here. We haven't seen, have we seen Golbez? Uh, we haven't, but I, I, I think even Golbez wouldn't be too scary anymore. I'm not afraid of Golbez here. I just, I, I just, I'm trying to think who else, who could be at the giant and who could be here. I ain't afraid of no Golbez. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no Ghast. Looks like Rosa's our duplicate character this seed. Uh, interesting uh, choice for Beardnerd if he's going to want to ditch Tella for a, a low level character uh, to be the anchor. We've or seen we Val want... and we've seen King Queen Eblin. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, uh, you might take Fu here and throw the curse ring on him. He didn't rear his head yet this seed, so it had to be somewhere. Potentially in the potentially in the hook route as well. He does decide to ditch Tella for Fusia. Taking the uh, old man upgrade. Okay, and Cassidy gets through the elements the second time. It's one of those fights where, <laughs> ill prepared, you might you might make some snap decisions that don't don't quite do as much as you were hoping. It's one of those weird fights where there's so many mechanics going on in one fight. I mean, it's kind of supposed to be like that. That where it, you see it in the vanilla game, you're fighting all four fiends at once, so all of them have something different going on. But just knowing all of that for the uh, randomizer here is just uh, can sometimes be tricky, and especially if uh, a transition happens when you're not expecting it. Yeah, you don't want to time out some sort of tier three, tier three elemental spell, and then and then have the transition occur. Uh, question of the chat: Does Fu actually make a good anchor? Uh, not naturally. He always has that 20 agility, which is not a great number for an anchor. However, our runners did find a cursed ring, and the uh, the uh, subtracting of the 15 uh, agility from that uh, actually makes him a reasonable anchor. We're going to get a second play of this, this DDR music as Beer Nerd... Finally, at an hour and 50 minutes in, achieves go mode. And another Avenger. So both, like, there's absolutely no need for Baxis. <laughs> like, we've got Cecil and Kane can both be Avengered up. And uh, you just have to cast... I think they have at least one back because they found it a chest. Uh, and if not, they could just have Rosa cast Berserk on Yang. And then you could basically sit back and heal with Rosa. That's all you need to do for the Zero Miss fight. So get your get your harps out, get your Z flags out. And given that uh, Beer Nerd has the pass, I believe, Rex, that there's, there's a question that we're rapidly approaching here. Absolutely. We need to ask that question in this play-in race. Whose butt are we kicking tonight? Because it is butt time. It is butt time for sure. It's Toon's butt, just everything all at once. So what? what's going to happen first? Um... And yes, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is a, a randomized Z sprite because he's too rude to put in any other spots in the game. So there are 450-some-odd Z sprites 
primarily done by Scala Kitty, and I I don't even think I've seen them all, but there are certainly some favorites if you have any guesses. Bernard doing a little bit of last minute menuing to make sure everything is exactly what he wants for this fight. I don't think those guards are going to stay long, stay around too long. I think that's unlikely, yes. <laughs> Stark Paladin, I, I am also a fan of Dusty Miss. Started with that Avenger on Kane. Just have to be sure that uh, the turn order doesn't come up before you get out the Z sprite, I believe, because otherwise you might get stuck with glitched standing still Kane. We have Xenomus uh, for all you alien fans out there. damage <clears throat> as is expected here but uh no not gonna be able to throw nukes just just with the lack of any additional star veils yeah i mean that would be okay but you got trizerk you've got a you've got a very healthy rosa who can heal after any big bangs and you've got cecil hitting for almost 5k like this is this Zeromus is not gonna be uh too much of an obstacle here. Y yeah, I, I think you're right there, Rex. <laughs> uh like, not like, not a huge threat. Like Fu's sitting on the ground now, and I like I don't think Beardier needs to even think about raising him. I mean we'll see. I mean maybe that's his plan, but Good life, you get life too here, but is that another silk web? The first one did hit, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, Fu took the nuke, and that's how Fu ended up down. Uh, maybe trying to interrupt the script. But if, if I would just cure four with Rosa until everyone's full, and then wait. And try to cure four out of... I mean, the only bad thing that could happen here would be Big Bang into rocks. And even that doesn't seem highly probable. I saw our, our restreamer Dathis say that it was another nerf, but I didn't see a shake. If you want to nerf the second one, you have to do it after the shake. Uh, so I'm not sure. Um, in any case, we get the cure four off before another Big Bang hits, so um, the characters are very safe. Still berserked and doing everything they need to, so. Now direct casting white. Maybe going for a swag kill here. That could have been a face change into Meteo. That was, so this white actually could be, could be the swag kill. Yeah, the charge time on that wait a little too long <laughs> for that sway kill, but I was thinking maybe, job. yeah, if if none of those Zerkers hit the kill on that one. Big GG is to Beardard for winning this and making it into the uh, bracket round um, of the event. This is a really awesome job. Full clearing this and uh, just uh, using this uh, Excal Cecil to the best. Very well done by Beardard here. 17 out of 17 and, and 155 is not something to shake your head at. And I think we have Beardner joining us. Um, 
Uh, Beardard uh, GG is on your run today. Hey, thank you very much. So, um, you 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 basically did a full clear of this. Uh, how are you feeling as this, uh, especially as you're getting into the late part of this of this scene? Um, I was kind of getting nervous, um, especially when I realized it was Earth Crystal because I had that for uh, for a little while. But uh, also pretty good. I think that's the fastest I've ever full cleared a seed, so that was nice. Yeah, you came down from the moon with, you know, uh, the whole world being your oyster, and, you know, you sort of just step by step moved your way through everything, and, and un unfortunately it was that Luca key into the earth crystal. Um, I mean, I don't know if I was in your situation, I'd be like, well, you know, you... There are only so many guesses you can make. One of them has to be right. Um, but getting that pass as well, I think, kind of helped, at least with your timing. But yeah, uh, take us through sort of, did you consider doing a D-Machine grind early, or, or where were you at? Um, it was uh, going to be D-Machine if I didn't find Siren on the moon. I can do a D-Machine grind, but I'm definitely more comfortable um, with the Hourglass and King Ryu. And you had some... Um, some hourglasses in your inventory when you found those uh, those sirens so it was on from there right yeah yep uh, absolutely yeah and, uh, the rest of the levels I expected just to pick up clearing the moon I think you know with it was about 50 minutes 55 minutes in when you when you found those sirens and you got that darkness crystal and that's usually where people you know kind of waffle on what the right choice is but Given the bosses you found up there on the moon and the, the amount of items and, you know, Bahamut wasn't hiding anywhere silly. Uh, so you were really only down to a key item hunt. So that, you know, that really turned out to be the right play. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it really did work out very well. I was very lucky with how that panned out. And uh, so now you're, you've, you've made it past the play and you've made it past the Swiss. You are now officially in the brackets. Uh, have you had a time to look at or run any uh, seeds with the bracket flag set, the difference between this one and the next one? Uh, I've done a few and it's uh, definitely an interesting twist on, or a change to the, to the brackets or the, in the brackets. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I, it's uh, just gonna be a fun new challenge. All right, I'm not going to ask you to spoil any of your secrets, lest anyone who's running against you hear it. So uh, I'm just glad that you've had a chance to take a look at it and uh, are getting excited for that. Uh, did you have any other uh, thoughts about the, the Swiss rounds and the play-in and um, the event so far? Yeah, I'd really like to say that all my opponents and everybody um, running the show has been really great. It's my first tournament, and I, I feel really welcome. It's such a great community. Yeah, I'm glad to see a new face uh, doing really well so far, too. Uh, once again, GG's on your run tonight, and uh, good luck at the rest of the event. Hey, thank you very much. All right, uh, that was Beer Nerd 1. Uh, make sure to give both him and Cassidy Moen a follow. Cassidy has uh, declined uh, an interview, so we're uh, not going to talk to him now. Um, I want to give one last shout out to the rest of the Restream team. We had Iker doing the tracking and Dathis on the Restream. Um, my co-commentator, uh, PK, uh, it was really good calling this race with you, buddy. That was a lot of fun. Um, thank you, Rex. And yeah, thanks again to Dathis and Akir and Cassidy and Beer Nerd. Um, and it looks like, I believe we have a, a raid target. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to be heading over to RPG Limit Break for the other uh, Restream Free Enterprise play-in match tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and send us over there. And I want to thank everybody for watching.